Sports will let you know. How about That's that? Interesting. Facebook getting in on the ride sharing phenomenon. There's an app for everything these there days, is. right? Facebook has kind of taken over all of that Seriously, now. They really have. Watch out, Facebook. That's really interesting. Also, Nate, this is pretty interesting to do too because I know that you are pretty much of a gym buff, am I right? That is correct. All right. Well, here you go for people that are gym buffs or people that may just like wine. There's a new study out right now out of the University of Alberta in Canada that's making some pretty serious claims about the health benefits of red wine. Interesting, right? Listen to this. Drinking one glass of red wine has the same benefit as working out at the gym for one hour. That is good information. Can you believe that? Researchers attribute it all to... The resveratrol, I want to make sure I have that right, resveratrol compound that's found in red wine. So we hit the streets, of course, to hear what some of people have, people have to say about this. Pretty interesting. I'm in here sweating and working out instead of just sitting on my rear end drinking a red glass of wine. I mean, it may be good for you in some way, but I know you don't burn as many calories as you are in the gym. So I don't really believe in that study. Oh. Okay, well, Jesse may not be too convinced, but researchers say there's reason to be. The resveratrol compound improves heart function as well as physical performance, similar to the effect of sweating it out on a Saturday night at the gym or at the club, wherever you're going to go. You can learn more about this study on our website at wiat.com. Just search red wine. Really interesting. Another interesting story. The makers behind Chobani Greek yogurt have been told to ditch an ad campaign that takes a dig at the competition. That's right. Chobani's biggest competitors, YoPlay and Light and Fit Greek yogurt, both cheered this decision. Chobani's ad called Simply 100 focused on the natural ingredients in the yogurt while drawing attention to the competitors' use of artificial preservatives and sweeteners. But the judge ruled that those aren't dangerous, as the ad leads consumers to believe. The ad is now being pulled from the internet. Well, your time right now is 612. The fun is gearing up along the Gulf Coast as Mardi Gras 2016 goes into overdrive. We'll take you there and tell you what you can expect if you're planning to attend this year's celebration.
watching Wake Up Alabama on WIAT CBS 42 News. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Well, happening today, Mardi Gras, the annual celebration, is in full swing along the Alabama Gulf Coast. And if you haven't made plans to attend, here's a look at what you're missing. Now, Mobile police say more than 56,000 revelers hit the streets of Mobile Thursday to view the order of the polka dots parade. The country's oldest Mardi Gras is going full throttle this weekend with parades in parts of Mobile, nearby Orange Beach, even Fairhope. If you're planning to head out there and would like to take a look at a schedule of this week's events, just log on to WIAT.com. Well, of course, if you're planning to head there, you're planning to go anywhere, you're probably wondering how the traffic is going to be, especially along I-65. We're going to check in right now with WIAT 42 News traffic reporter Rachel, who has all the answers for us. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Alex. Yep, the 65 may be a little bit more congested this morning, but so far, no accidents or major delays on the road. You can see this is a live look on I-65. Some people hitting the streets this morning, but we're traveling at top speeds. Just beware, there is some construction sites once you make it to Mobile. That's at mile marker 24 to 25. So give yourself a little time, slow down in that area, but you'll be there for the Senior Bowl this evening. And now we'll take a look at that beautiful forecast for this weekend with Nate. Thanks a lot, Rachel. Yeah, an absolutely gorgeous forecast for us this weekend. As we start the work week, though, things are really going to change, and we're targeting Groundhog Day, yeah, February 2nd, as a, a time not to see if Punxsutawney Phil gives us a colder or warmer winter forecast, but for storms, possibly. Mild and dry this weekend, numbers reaching the 60s. How about those Groundhog Day storms on Tuesday into Wednesday? A weather aware issue right now. We'll go over what that means in a second. And colder air after the storms move out Wednesday. And as we continue the rest of the work week, Thursday and Friday, some nicer weather comes back. But temperatures this morning on the cool side of things. Numbers right at freezing in a few spots. Tuscaloosa, Talladega, Alexander City, Jasper, all hanging around that freezing mark. Also Pell City and Anniston. How about 29 though in Gadsden? The temperature that kind of sticks out at you though is 42 in Birmingham. We had a little bit of wind develop just a few hours ago and that led to milder temperatures in the 40s for the last few hours. But they're starting to come down now as we approach sunrise here in just about half an hour. Satellite radar picture all dry and all clear. A few clouds associated with a subtropical jet stream down closer to the coast. So if you are headed down to Mobile for the Senior Bowl or any of those Mardi Gras activities this weekend, should be nice, although you might see a little bit more cloud cover than everybody else does for today. Double barrel high pressure systems going to keep us dry all throughout the southeast. But by the time we get to Monday, things will start to change. But let's enjoy this really nice weekend while we've got it. Lots of sunshine today, a few passing high clouds. Then the clouds will thicken up and develop overnight into early Sunday morning. I'm not going to rule out a stray shower on Sunday as we heat up tomorrow afternoon, and temperatures will be once again pretty warm, but nothing to really indicate uh, organized rain threats. So we're not going to mention it in the formal forecast, but we will for Monday into Tuesday as showers move in and then thunderstorms move in for the uh, middle of our work week. It's a classic. Set up for early February. We've got two different ingredients. We've got southerly flow at the lower levels and the mid levels of the atmosphere. That will increase our instability. And also, we've got wind shear that will be developing as a cold front moves in. A low level jet stream will increase, increasing that wind shear when you have the instability and the wind shear. Those are two ingredients that you need for that severe weather chance. The timing is going to be tricky, though. It looks like Tuesday night into Wednesday will be the time frame, but all of this could change. Just a few hours is going to make a big difference. So, of course, we'll keep you posted if any of those timing changes or if we see this kind of weaken or slow down. All of that will be a little bit more hammered out as we get closer to the actual event. But let's enjoy this weekend. 65 degrees this afternoon, sun, some high clouds, much warmer conditions. A southerly and southeasterly wind develops. Then clouds will increase and much milder conditions too tomorrow morning. 50 degrees. To start off your Sunday. You look at that Storm Track 7 day forecast. We start off with a warm weekend. Monday, a few chances for showers and 70 degrees to start off the work week. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, weather aware. We want everyone to be ready for the possibility of some strong to possibly severe weather. By Thursday and Friday, we see temperatures decrease 
and conditions get a whole lot better. And download the Storm Track Weather app. It's the best way to keep track of hour by hour forecasts. Also, live interactive radar will come in handy on Tuesday and Wednesday. So we want everyone to be weather aware. Things will turn a little bit topsy turvy by the middle of the work week. Absolutely. We got to all make sure we stay weather prepared. That's it. Right? Prepared for any weather that comes our way. Well, your time right now, it's 620. The Red Cross is gearing up for a fire safety event in the community. Next, how they're teaming up with local fire departments to help keep residents safe. Watching Wake Up Alabama on WIAT CBS 42 News. Welcome back. Did you know two thirds of all house fires occur in homes without smoke detectors or homes with no alarms because those alarms just really aren't working properly? Well, Alicia Anger here with the American Red Cross is one of many folks who are behind a campaign to change all that. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. We were just talking during the break, a startling number of fires that we've had this Absolutely. year. Tell us about this campaign that you have today. We have the Home Fire Campaign. It is a national initiative by the American Red Cross to cut the number of home fires and deaths by 25% over a five-year period. And today we'll be working with the Adamsville Police, I'm sorry, the Adamsville Fire Department. We'll be working with them, canvassing the neighborhood in Adamsville, and we'll be installing smoke alarms in homes where there aren't any working smoke alarms or homes where there aren't any at all. Mm -hmm. If there are batteries in that home that they aren't working, we'll be replacing those as well. And that's a huge need. I know that even during the fires that we, the fires mm -hmm. we've been covering over the past few weeks, that seems to always be 
a main issue is just not having those working fire alarms. Now, I know you were saying the campaign today, how exactly does the scheduling work for these campaigns? For instance, the campaign today, they reached out to us to work in that area. It was a very devastating fire about a week ago with that family out there. So that fire department reached out to us and we're collaborating together to bring that to the community. They want to make sure that everyone in their community is safe. Absolutely. And how can people get involved? People can get involved just by helping helping themselves at home first. Um, you can go to our website. It's redcross.org slash Alabama. And we actually have ways to build your own kits. So if you can make a plan for yourself, that, make, that way you know how to get out of your home. Mm -hmm. People don't know you only have about two minutes to escape wow. a home fire. Anything after two minutes, you're really putting yourself and your family in danger of smoke inhalation. Fires spread very quickly. A fire that starts only has about 30 seconds before it fully engulfs a home sometimes. Wow. So we really advise having a plan and making sure that you do have smoke alarms in your home. Absolutely. Some really good information that we're learning here today, but also at the event that's going to be happening as well. Organizers will gather at Adamsville Fire Department off railroad, off railroad road this morning at 830. From there, they will spread out and go door to door installing free smoke alarms in homes where they're needed. They'll also check batteries and current smoke detectors as well as provide neighbors with information on how to create a fire escape plan. Thank you so much, Alicia, Thank for stopping you. by. Like Thank we were saying, us. good information, absolutely something that people need to be aware of. Certainly, uh, we're in these cold weather months as well. When yes. You know, we see, a, we see that spike. Now, up next, we introduced you to a special program that was born out of tragedies like the house fire that claimed four lives here in Birmingham last week. News 10's Nicole Hart has this story.